Hi, my name is Julia M. Spencer. I'm a real estate advisor, investor, and your number one source for real estate advice online. And with this video, I want to tell you a little bit about opportunity zones and basically what are there, should you invest in them, and what does that even mean? And before I get too far with this video, I wanted to tell you to make sure you subscribe on my website at the bottom of this video, juliamspencer.com if you haven't yet. And uh, welcome to my son's closet, actually, of all places. Um, that way, uh, we're doing that because there's some background noise out there and I'm trying to get these videos going before I forget the information. But I wanted to tell you about Opportunity Zones because I had a question from a subscriber. I'm gonna read that question, my response as well, and kind of make this video about this. That way, um, you have the information as well. So let's talk a little bit about Opportunity Zones. Um, I got this from the IRS website, actually, I'm just going to read it. An opportunity zone is an economically distressed community where new investments under certain conditions may be eligible for preferential tax treatment. Localities qualify as opportunity zones if they have been nominated for that designation by the state and the nomination has been certified by the Secretary of the U.S. Treasury via his delegation of authority to the Internal Revenue Service. That's a handful right there, <laughs> basically. But, um, but basically, um, there's certain areas in certain cities, towns, municipalities, counties, where um, the area has just been really depressed. The real estate has been really sluggish. There's not been any new economic development. No businesses are moving in there. And so the government's trying to kind of incentivize people to buy there and establish businesses, basically get the place to grow. And um, I will read you now the question that I had from my subscriber who uh, was kind of wondering about that and my response to him as well. So the question I had was from David and um, mentioned this on my radio show already, but radio shows take like a little bit longer to, for me to edit. So I wanted to make this video. Um, hi David, I said, he asked me, do you know anything about Opportunity Zones? And I said, thanks for reaching out. I certainly do have some information about Opportunity Zones, but this is less of a real estate investing question, but more of a tax question. So although I understand the basics, a CPA would be the expert to explain all the details to you and help you with any calculations. As far as the Opportunity Zones and where they are, they can be found out easily online. Just do a Google search for your city, county, state, municipality, whatever. And I will try to summarize the topic in one of my future videos. That's this video and publish them soon. So um, his answer, of course, was that thanks for the response. I just wanted to make a clarification, he says. I think that saying Opportunity Zones are not a real estate tool would be like saying a 1031 exchange is not a real estate tool either. In fact, I think that Opportunity Zones are the biggest money laundering scheme that has ever existed. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like you can self-declare, roll tax deferred monies into these zones, and in 10 years you can clean the tax liability in addition to avoid depreciation. In other words, pay no capital gains tax whatsoever. So um, examples say I sell my fully depreciated apartment building and take that money that was subject to long-term capital gains tax and then buy into an opportunity zone, meaning the criteria of putting at least 100% increase in the zone project, you can walk away in 10 years paying no taxes. This is how I read this new program. I'm a, not a tax accountant, but I've read all the information I can find on this, and this is how I understand it. Is there something I am missing? All right, let me just summarize this for you because I kind of read that really fast. So what he's saying is that he is a real estate owner, apparently has a um, apartment building, I believe. Yeah, apartment building, and apparently has owned it for 30 years because that's the only way that he would have it fully depreciated. And in fact, I think for apartment buildings, since it's commercial, I think the depreciation is more like 40 years. So let's say he's had this building for 40 years and paid it off and it's fully depreciated. So now if he were to sell this property, he would have to pay capital gains taxes on it, obviously. So the capital gains would be on how much he would sell that property for 
and um, how much he paid for that property minus um, any depreciation that he's taken over the 40 years. He says it's fully deprecated apartment building, so um, he's taken all the depreciation he could already. Apartment is fully depreciated. So he basically has this apartment building, he wants to sell it, but it looks like he would have to pay full capital gains taxes. Now, mind you, capital gains taxes are paid on your income, and they're paid on your income for that year. So even though we say that capital gains taxes could be quite significant percentage, somewhere between 30 and 40 percent in the United States, um, that's still 30 or 40 percent on what you made that year. So um, the goal, of course, this is what I always teach everybody, is when you're a real estate investor to not just have one property, you have lots of them, so you can spread things out a little bit. Even though this building right here might be fully depreciated, you're trying to sell it, you're trying to save on capital gains taxes, make sure that you have other ones that can offset that depreciate that capital gains tax a little bit. Maybe even have some other income that you can um, use um, to offset, like maybe some liabilities or expenses, you can offset that um, capital gains tax with a little bit to lower your interest rate, of course. But that's a whole nother discussion. Check out my depreciation videos on that. So basically what he's saying, he's taking this property, he's going to roll it over into a project in an opportunity zone. Maybe even selling it to his own business or something like that, from personal property to, to a business. And then he would keep that property there for 10 years, and um, then he can just walk away, sell it, walk away, and not pay any taxes at all. Um, that's correct. That's actually a really good um, analysis. However, he's assuming a lot of things here that may or may not be true. So let me just um, um, kind of answer this question here. I, this is what I wrote. Hi, David. Again, excellent questions. I will address this in one of probably several of my future YouTube videos, also in my radio show. 1031, as you correctly state, is a tax method to defer, avoid, whatever you want to call it. Capital gains, this, um, the same as opportunity zones, is also a method to defer or, um, in this case, avoid capital gains taxes. This is not a new program and there are limitations. A lot of what real estate investors do does have to do with taxes, so I still hold firm on the fact that it is more of a tax question than real estate investing question, as opportunity zones also apply to opening a business and not just buying real estate in historically depressed areas. Real estate has always been an excellent way to find advantages in the tax liability side, and I, along with most of all of the savvy investors that I know, use these and many more methods that I explain in my ebooks. These methods are not illegal, just smart ways to save on taxes. You are correct there. Calling it money laundering, which is illegal, uh, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. In fact, I, in fact, opportunity zones are there for a reason. They're just, um, I'll go into that here. Let me just keep reading. In fact, I think if you believe that to be a repulsive way to do business, then the information in my ebooks may make your hair stand up even more. You might even get a heart attack talking to me, probably. <laughs> but again, none of these methods are illegal. Just a way to run a business smartly and have been, these have been used for ages, including um, our dear president that we have right now, who is getting the heat for, for using these methods as his um, dad's old tax returns are being revealed. He's um, historically has moved real estate from different places and charged for different things. If you um, haven't seen that report, feel free to check it. I'm sure there's information about that on YouTube. Um, but I'm not a politician. I'm apolitical. Uh, I'm a business person, so I didn't want to go into politics too much. As far as for me, I take things in stride as I have to. I have a family to feed and secure their financial freedom as well as mine. So it's not illegal. It's fair game to me. I will look at your example above in detail, give some feedback, which I'm doing right now. Mind you that opportunity zones, uh, zones are very depressed areas, usually from a real estate perspective, and that in real estate, everything circles around location. And you may have heard this, location, location, location. Um, I have some really nice real estate here, right here in the city of Savannah, but would it be about 10 miles east? 
it would be worth 10 times as much as it is now. Being as it stands, the location, I can't change that. And um, that's something you have to really keep in mind buying into opportunity zones. Opportunity zones are opportunity zones for a reason. The area is just a crap area for real estate investing, basically, just to, to put it out there. So although the advantage seem to be great buying real estate in those areas, if you can't rent them or do anything with them, you're stuck with a worthless piece of crap real estate and lost after a lost after all. You've lost everything. You lost the money that you put in from this building that you sold that may have been in a good area, this apartment building. And, um, and you're stuck with keeping it for many years in order to avoid the capital gains. So you have to be really careful with opportunity zones and know the areas very well. That's my two cents worth. Um, there's a lot of, I've seen opportunity zones, not, not right here in Savannah, but for example, in Macon, Georgia, there's a couple of areas that are designated opportunity zones. And from what I remember from my research back then, um, if you bought into those areas, real estate, of course, um, you kind of like good to go. You don't have to do anything else. Just kind of hold on to it. But you also have to factor in the holding cost if you can't rent it, can't sell it, can't put a business into it. And um, just nobody wants to go there because it's a bad piece of real estate in a bad area. Um, but if you are actually thinking about doing opportunity zone investing, like putting a business there, I think the requirement also states that you have to employ a certain amount of people that live in that area in the opportunity zone that you have to employ in order to be able to uh, get that qualification. There's a number of really good questions there on the IRS website. I try to go to the source to get my information whenever I do research because people tell you whatever they want to say. Um, so really, I guess I should have said that right. Opportunity zone is not a real estate investing tool. It is a economic development tool that the government uses to stimulate economic growth in certain areas. If you're smart in, like, say, it's an area that you know is up and coming, maybe it's a historically depressed area in some downtown area, but the downtown of that particular town or city is coming, is making a comeback, maybe lofts coming in and businesses moving in, restaurants and things like that, buy into that opportunity zone before it's too late, of course. But you have to be really smart, you have to be savvy, you have to know what you're doing, and you have to have a plan of um, how to capitalize on that investment, or else you're going to put in your money, hard-earned money, from a fully deprecated building, in this case, his apartment building is going to going to move the money over to an opportunity zone, and basically just over the years, lose out on it. So let's give you a little bit more information on opportunity zones, and how Opportunity Zones Spur Economic Development. This is also from the IRS website. I'm just going to read it to you. You can go there yourself. Um, IRS.gov and it's um, just type in Opportunity Zones, Frequently Asked Questions. Um, opportunity Zones are des designed to spur economic development by providing tax benefits to investors. First, investors can defer tax on any prior gains invested in a qualified opportunity fund until the earlier of the date on which the investment in a QOF, Qualified Opportunity Fund, is sold or exchanged, or December 31st, 2026. If the QOF investment is held for longer than five years, then there is a 10% exclusion of the deferred gain. If held for more than seven years, the 10% becomes 15%. And second, if the investor holds the investment in the Opportunity Fund for at least 10 years, the investor is eligible for an increase in basis of the QOF investment equal to its fair market value on the date that QOF investment is sold or exchanged. Note, market value. Market value is not maybe what you purchased it for. If it's a depressed zone, it's an economically depressed zone, market values might be going down. So you got to really... In investigate these things. I'm, I'm really glad you guys asked me these questions because I get to read and research the stuff, but you also have to do your own thinking. You kind of have to approach every topic and subject like that in terms of what could go wrong with this deal. You know, always be suspicious that the government doesn't just give away money for free. I mean, they do sometimes, but in, in this instance, it's not really happening. 
And here's another really good question I wanted to address. Um, the question was, um, how do you find a list of designated qualified opportunity zones? You go to the opportunity zones resources and in the Federal Register at IRB notice 2018-48 and further a visual map of the census tracts designated as qualified opportunity zones may also be found at opportunity zones resources. And if you go to the IRS website, just type in opportunity zones resources, you'll be able to pull it up there. And that's um, all I wanted to mention with this video. It's a pretty long video. I'm sorry you guys had to stick around for it. I hope um, you found this informational. If you did, make sure you leave me a comment. Um, good, bad, or ugly, I take them all. Share my videos. Um, talk to each other, too. This is a community, and I want everybody to interact if possible. Make sure you subscribe to my website at the bottom of this video. You can also go to YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do have a radio show in town right here in Savannah, Georgia. We talk about topics like this and very similar topics. You can stream my show from anywhere in the world. It's wru.org. Archived shows can also be found on that website. My show is on, on 12, at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesdays. So it's middle of the day, middle of the week, Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. Um, starts right after the happiness message. If you missed the show, don't worry. I put them here on YouTube as well, right here on YouTube at a later date. Um, takes me a little bit of time to um, update everything and get everything uploaded, but don't worry, nothing is lost. And um, I hope you have a great day investing. That concludes my video on the opportunity zones and whether or not you should invest in them. Have a great day. For your free guide to real estate investing, visit juliammspencer.com.